Okay. Colligative properties. What's colligative mean again? Do you remember? Division? Uh-uh. It, and it's a, an adjective for proper, the word property. Not all properties are colligative. For example, here's a hint. Density is not a colligative property. What's colligative then? Because we're, what we're going to be talking about is boiling point elevation. Boiling points go up. Freezing points go down. And these are colligative properties. They depend on composition. the composition. They depend. You're going to have more of a boiling point elevation if you add more. Because what are they doing? The boiling point of what goes up? Solute? The solvent. The boiling point of the, so just pick one of them. The boiling point of the solvent goes up when you add a solute. Could you imagine the boiling point going up even more if you add more solute? Yeah. So that is a what property? Colligative. Depends on the, the amount of the solute that you're adding. So that's why they, they call this entire thing colligative properties. So boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, right? You're, you live next door to your granny, and it's just got freezing rain outside. So you should get your little behind out of bed and go do what in the morning? Because you know she's going to get up and go get her newspaper or donuts or whatever down the street, or go hop in her car. Salt. She'd salt her sidewalks, right? What does that do? Well, I should probably clean it off first, I guess, but you never know. The salt, what does the salt do? Does it change the melting the, the You're there. <laughs> melting point and freezing point is the same thing. Right. Call fusion point, there. It's basically fusion point of the ice, so it can evaporate or melt. Which doesn't <laughs> You're getting there. It changes what? Someone help her out. Yeah? <laughs> what does it do? You're on there. It changes the freezing point. It does what to it? There's a, oh. It changes the state. I'm surprised. In Gen Chem, we call them boiling point elevation, freezing point depression. depression. I'm surprised that word wasn't there. It's on, it's on our oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, OK. So, so you have no excuses then, Mel. The freezing point goes. You add this, throw this salt down there. But you, freezing point goes, Kevin, the freezing uh, point, down, because depression. Like, freezing point goes down. So isn't down more negative? Yeah, down's more negative. Why is that a good thing? Why is that a good thing? Because the ice will melt. Why? Why will the ice all of a sudden melt? Yeah, so you lowered the freezing point so much that now it's going to melt. It's like all of a sudden now it, it freezes at a super, super, super cold temperature. So, and it will if you get it that cold. It'll still freeze and it'll be just like ice before. Except it's kind of nice because the, uh, and that's usually what happens. I remember that's usually what happens is it, is it, it'll melt a little bit and then it'll just freeze up again because it gets it can't lower it that much. But the point is is that you get these little grooves in the ice, so you get some friction going. So it's, it still helps Granny. Okay. But yeah, it makes it so dang cold that the freezing point goes so far down that it, that it melts it. Uh, what's little B? Help poor Gloriana out. She's been here, but she's been gone for a while. 
modality, right? And then in the concept preview, I think we need this to do the homework. What was the little relationship that we found for modality? Something times something, remember this? Yeah, it was moles of solid over kilograms of solvent is molality, but little b was... Oh, it's like changing power over... I was thinking this. Didn't we derive... That? This is what I'm thinking. And cause it's something that we derived in the concept preview. So if you don't remember it, you got to derive it to do the homework. So. But just like, you know, it is a possible exam question, but the point is, is this is a relationship that's available to you, and it's not clear anywhere. That's why it's in the concept preview. But so following our convention, what is XB? Just see if you guys remember this stuff. XB is mole fraction of the Oh, yeah, we don't really know one or the other. But usually B is solute. And how do you calculate mole fraction again? Like, for example, mole fraction of solute. Subtract the number of solute divided by the solute plus the solute. Yes. So the moles of the solute divided by the total moles. Exactly. MA would be what? Big M? Molecular mass of A. Yeah, molecular mass of A. OK. And I think the concept preview covered all the units and all that kind of stuff. OK, so we are going to be messing with this stuff. And they plotted how the chemical potential changes with, with temperature. And they showed how here the, if you add a solution is in green, so if it's pure, here's the freezing point. But if you make a solution, now you have the green plot. Oh, man, the freezing point dropped way down here, right? But boiling point. Right, here's the pure boiling point. And then if you have the solution boiling point, it's only right there. Which one seems like this change in boiling, this change in temperature, whether it's the boiling point or the freezing point, which change looks bigger? In general, according to this plot, the change is always going to be bigger for freezing. Right? The change is always bigger for freezing. due to the, how, the chemical, how the chemical potential changes with the temperature. OK, so let's say we were going to use this equation. Well, you get a lot of this stuff. It looks like k times the mole fraction. So then they tell us what k is. So we could actually calculate it. Or KB times the molality, and then they give the KB a little constant name, ebullioscopic constant. So they're going to have these things tabulated. And just like here, the cryoscopic constant, I don't know if I gave you the term for that. Yeah, I did, cryoscopic constant. Right? Or if you're talking about freezing point depression. Both, both of these are going to be looked up for the so you can calculate them. That's what this is trying to say. You can calculate this stuff. Maybe we should talk about that first. What's the T star? Yeah, it's squared, but then there's a little star on there. Star means pure. So you're adding the solute right, to the solvent. And the freezing point goes down. The boiling point goes up. So this pure temperature of what? Solute. Of the solute? T star. Solvent. Yeah, that's my question. So does this T star refer to pure solute, pure solvent? And at what temperature? What's so special? What temperature are they picking? It's Stick to one. Let's stick to boiling point elevation. The boiling point's going up. It's the, the temperature of it reaches the boiling point temperature reaches before you add any solute to the solvent. There you go. The boiling point 
before you add any solutes. In other words, that's the pure whose boiling point? The pure solvent. solvent. That's what's doing the boiling. Right? These are supposed to be what solutions? Really, really concentrated or, that, or dilute? They're supposed to be really dilute. So we're talking about the solvents here. The solvents boiling point, right? That'd be T star. So you gotta look it up, whatever the solution is. Enthalpy of vaporization. Look it up, whatever the solvent is. And you can actually calculate these things. And we played with units already in the concept preview. If you talk about freezing point depression, there's another T star. So Kelly, what would that one be? If you wanted to calculate these constants instead of looking them up. Yeah, for the other one. Pure solvent, but what for the pure solvent? It's it's what? Anybody help her? Freezing point. It's freezing point. Yeah, you gotta look it up. Freezing point of the pure solvent. Okay, and to be infusion again for the pure solvent. So. You don't want to calculate it. The book says, look them up. I don't, I'm just pretending with, I don't, know what, I don't remember what the homework's saying. You can look up these constants, ebullioscopic and cryoscopic constants. You would look them up for the sol. <laughs> Which one would you look them up for? The solvent. The solvent. Yeah. Right? No, I'm talking about KF and KB. KF and KB, you look up for the solvent. Right, look up for the solvent. So does it sound like the solute even matters? No, the identity of it doesn't matter. It's just the, the amount. That's colligative property. Okay, that's colligative property. Okay. Anything else here? Oh, I got it corrected. There's a little star here. Okay. What's osmotic pressure? What are they? How are they trying to? How are they trying to illustrate osmotic pressure here? I don't even remember this P here. Oh, huh, okay. That's okay. How are they trying to illustrate osmotic pressure in that figure 7.23? Is the pressure to like, halt osmosis? Halt. The pressure to halt osmosis is osmotic pressure. That's a great definition for it. So what is osmotic pressure then? It's, yeah, the pressure, yeah. How would you visual, how do you visualize it? This, how is there, like why do you, what side is, is the pure? Both sides. Yeah, okay, one well, of the stars, the pure. And it's also <laughs> nice and blue looking, right. right? Okay, so here's your crud in this one, your seawater, your ocean water, okay? So if you just have a, what's this? Now, for this whole thing to work, though, what does this have to be? Semi-permeable membrane. Semi membrane. What's the word salt bridge have to do with anything? That was in what? Electro Electrochemistry, electrodes, right. So that's a semi-permeable membrane. So what's so special about a semi-permeable membrane? Only the solvent's permeable. Yeah. So own the solvent's permeable. Now, what does that mean? Does that, is it, are we talking about a physical blockage thing going on here, or what? Yeah. Yeah. So if it's water molecules, right, then there's 
physical, physically, it's like a filter. Only water molecules can be passing through this thing, right? So all of the, the junk, everything else can't, can't fit through it. Water wants to flow from what side to what side? Highest to lowest. Does that mean wa pure water has a concentration? Yeah. Yeah, in fact, what is it? Anybody know? 55.4 molar concentration of pure water. It has to, right? Because there's so many moles per liter. So all you do is just take a liter of the stuff, see how many moles there are over a liter. So well, if water has a concentration, why don't Water's a liquid. What the heck? How come we don't write it in equilibrium constant expressions? Right. What? Uh, When you have a, this is going way back, probably to analytical, which Jeffrey is in right now. When you write equilibrium constants, and we didn't talk about this that much, but yeah, products over reactants. But it's really not concentrations. It's really what? It starts with an A. Activity. It's really activities. And activities are all with respect to their standard state. So that's why all equilibrium constants are unitless. So the standard state of water is, well, water. So if you have 55.4 molar or 55.4 molar, it just doesn't do any good, so you don't even put it in there. Solid, same thing. There's, so it's, it's really activities, and activities are all with respect to their standard states. So that's, that's why. But yeah, the point is, as you guys, you're right, it goes from high to low, so if you want to stop water from going through here, you have to exert an extra pressure, like Jeff was saying. Exert the osmotic pressure and push down on it, and then that'll stop it. Okay. Could we push it? What if we pushed even harder? Reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis. Would you get pure water out of that? No. Why not? But little ions don't really hurt you, right? In fact, you want some ions if you're going to drink the stuff, right? Would pretty much the only guys on the planet who get nice, clean water th through reverse osmosis are, I don't know if this is politically correct, the Arab countries because they got a lot of money, right? Nice ocean, they live in a desert, no water. But they can fork out the money for electricity for these huge reverse osmosis plants and get pure water out of it. At least that's my, my understanding of how things are working. But Okay. Oh, we have those words right here. Um, and these expansions, they just don't, these other terms, they're just too small to worry about. That's what the dot, dot, dot means. They're too small to really worry about. So that's pretty much why they just stop right here. And that's why we have our equation for osmotic pressure. But if you want a more exact answer, do your virial coefficients and plug them in. OK. That's about it. OK. It's Take a look at these. Let's calculate the cryoscopic and ebullioscopic constants for tetrachloromethane. So those were what symbols? KB and KF. KB and KF, exactly. I think we have, where'd it go? Pretty much right here, right? So if you want to 
this is these two are equal. Just divide both sides by what? And we would have KB. Divide both sides by molality. So bring molality over here. But XB over M, oh, we already kind of knew that, didn't we? <laughs> right? That's molality. But uh, well, we can bring it over there. If we, it said tetrachloromethane. What compound is that? Carbon. We kind of more know it as carbon tetra, chloride. carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. So you're going to have to do what to, to figure this out? You're going to have to look up what? And to be a vaporization for what? Carbon tetrachloride. You can Google it or whatever. You also have to look up its. Yeah, it's for its molar mass. It's. It's boiling point, right? When we divided, but how, what do you do with this molality? Do you see what's going to happen? When you divide both sides by B, you get XB over little b. But XB over. XB is little b over 10. Yeah. So then the B cancels out with little b, it'll be the tail over the X. Yeah, because this, all right, look at this. Molar mass of that solvent is mole fraction over the molality. And that's what you had. So it's pretty much just, right, you bring this over to this side. You see what this is looking like? But you, you recognize that from the concept preview? So it's just the molar mass. So this is just a plug and chug question, right? As long as you get once you get over getting rid of molality, because there's no information on the question about what about molality. And the same goes for calculating the cryoscopic constant. Does it make sense? Go around and see what to do. The addition of 100 grams of a compound to 750 grams of carbon tetrachloride lowered the freezing point by 10.5 Kelvin. Calculate the molar mass of the compound. Somebody came by and asked a question about molar mass. Remember, I told you that, Kevin, what was the trick? It was you. What was the trick? Find the moles of the Well, yeah. We'll start at the beginning, though. Molar mass, molecular weight, is what over what? Uh, well, 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 hang on. It's just units. When you add up everything on a periodic table, you get grams over moles. We already know half of this. Jeff, which one do we know? Uh, grams. Of the compound, exactly. You got that. Done. You just got to get the number of moles. This is the part you got to find. OK, now, Kevin, how do you get those moles? We talked about it. See if you followed what I was saying, though. Get molality, right? Because what's the def Kelly, how is molality defined? That little b, molality was what over what? 
it was little molal molality of anything is what over what? Yeah. Mol moles of the solute over all over, oh, that's mole fraction. Over Kilograms of solvent, right. So little b, so pretty much find little b, because little b is the number of moles of sol solute all over the number of kilograms of solvent. So if you can find little b, you've got your answer. Because you know the kilograms of solvent. Where is it? Here it is. Here's a kilogram of solvent. Just convert it. And then you can get moles of solute, and that number will go right there. So that's how all these molar, when they use freezing point depression or boiling point elevation, this is always how they find molar masses. They're going to calculate the molality. And from the molality, once you get that number, multiply it by the kilograms of solvent, and you get moles. And that moles is what you put down here in the denominator to get your molar mass. Because you know how many grams of the unknown you put in there. So from the freezing point depression oh. equation. right? From the freezing point depression equation. And since they told you what the compound is, they expect you to look up what? The they ex exactly, the cryoscopic constant, KF. They expect you to look it up. Because that's why they told you the identity of the solvent. Jeffrey, make sense? Consider a container of volume 5 liters. OK. Calculate the entropy and Gibbs energy of mixing when we remove this partition. So Alyssa, what equation should we be using, do you think, just figure this one out? And your cold sounds worse than mine, Alyssa. Right? <laughs> just teasing. <laughs> right? You agree with Kevin? <laughs> what was it? Delta mix G is what? And then it has all these mole fractions in it, right? XA, natural log XA. OK. It looks good, but how do you use it? Ann, you got an idea? None. None. <laughs> NRT equals PV. Oh, yeah, NRT equals PV. Now, if you do that, how many gases are, are we talking about more than one type of gas? Gases are perfect. Yeah, gases are perfect, but is there more than one type of gas in there? There's nitrogen and hydrogen. So if you substitute PV for NRT, now you got to worry about those subscripts. And the subscripts could be hydrogen, nitrogen, and there's one more subscript that makes sense. Capital T for <coughs> capital T for Total, right? So I wouldn't, I mean, I don't know if I want to play that game, but you could. 
but the way it's written right now, let's just use what it's written. I don't, I don't think we need to be making it more difficult. N, N is probably what? There's two compartments. Is N the moles of nitrogen or hydrogen or what? N in this case has to be total. total. N has to be total. You, we got to find it. How are you going to find total moles? Don't we need to find total moles anyway? Let's pick X. Instead of putting A's and B's, let's put in what? Put in what? Yeah, H, H2 and oh, N2. So if we're going to calculate, I don't care, mole fraction of hydrogen, what's, how is that defined? Well, not X, it'd be little, little N. NH2 all over. Yeah. So we got to find total moles anyway. In fact, we got to find the individual moles. How are we going to do it? If Eric watches this, he's going to be going nuts right now. There you go. PV, PV equals NRT for each individual gas, right? You remember, does it make sense to put subscripts anywhere else? I guess it, it does if, you know, each compartment. So you have to handle each compartment individually. Didn't they tell us enough to get in? They told us the volume. I wouldn't pull that partition out. I would just keep that partition in there and calculate the moles of each. Because didn't they tell us? They told us if you keep the partition there, you know the volume. Uh, same temperature and pressure. So you know pressure, you know temperature. You can just find N mm -hmm. in each partition. That's what I would do. Find N. Make sense? What R would be the most convenient to use? The one with yeah, the one with atmospheres in it. I agree. 0.08. Zero point oh yeah oh eight two one liter atmospheres per mole kelvin. I would use that one. Most convenient. Okay. So any problemas? Was that problemos? <laughs> What's that, Kevin? <laughs> Yeah, it has to be, right? The same, that's ideal, same pressure, temperature, volume. Yeah, let's do it once. Okay. And then you have to do the same thing for entropy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We wouldn't have, we'd have to do all this, would we? Yeah. Maybe that's what Eric was yelling about this whole time in my head. Yeah. All right. How about 10? What the heck? Self test 1.5. Nobody brought a book, I doubt, right? Self test 
Who's the problemo? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I started saying that back to you. Dinking around. <laughs> what are the self test what? 1.5? What is it? Self test 1.5. Shouldn't it be 7.5? They're in chapter 7. Maybe it's a typo. Self test 7.6. I skipped it. Maybe it actually is 1.5. Maybe I am supposed to look at 1.5. Maybe it's not a typo. right there. It is self-test 1.5. So, so since you don't have a book, so we need, <coughs> here's the uh, mass percentages in air. Okay, so and here's the gas. So the gases are nitrogen, Oxygen. What else is in air? See if you guys know this. The major component. Argon. Argon. Ooh, good. <laughs> Carbon. Carbon. Dioxide. There. Yes. Two points. Okay. Seventy-five point five two. Oxygen is. What percent is oxygen? Higher. 23.15. Argon is 1.28. There's a lot of argon. I didn't know that. More than CO2. 0.046. Okay. The major gases, those are their mass percentages. We're supposed to calculate the entropy of mixing. So that's very similar to, to this equation, right? So that means we got to figure out what? We've got to figure out these mole fractions. Our, looks like there's four, four gases. So how is this equation, well, we can just write it. How is this equation going to change for delta mix S? Exactly. There's going to be four of those mole fractions you have to have in there. And how are you going to calculate those mole fractions? Yeah, for example, let's just see if you get one of these. It's going to be N over N oxygen all over yeah, and all of those. And O2, and N2, and argon, and CO2. So man, how do you get all these? Jeffrey, how are you gonna get all these? Um, we have, I put it all over 100, they have 75.52 grams of nitrogen. Okay, so when he says he put it all over 100, Better said would be you're assuming you have 100 grams of atmosphere or air. So assume good. Assume you have 100 grams of air. That's the easiest way. I agree with that. Or one gram of air, whatever. But 
assuming you have 100 grams of air, then you've got this many grams of nitrogen, that many grams of oxygen. Right? So then you can calculate all these moles, calculate all these mole fractions. It's very doable. OK? And with four minutes left, all of your homework's done. Man, I wish I was in Washington right now. <laughs>